other things in the UDC system. The UDC specification system was, uh, uh, was at that time uh, a very scientific system. And uh, the, the basic thing was that in the whole countries, also in Brazil, this uh, is this classification system. So we had a very high sentiment. Unfortunately, uh, it's not uh, continued. So both classes are not official. But this is this, this update is the UP system. But in, in general, this kind of classification systems are not used for information on the field of possible. Because when, when the uh, classical databases uh, began to be involved in the systems. Then uh, they developed uh, a new kind of natural hygiene system, uh, the Tessaus. And uh, the Tessaus uh, was uh, the dominant knowledge uh, organizing uh, technology uh, after uh, the. And uh, after uh, 1990, uh, the classical databases uh, have been challenged from search engines by Google and also from the social networks. Can I go You know, uh, social networks uh, are So, um, the, the UDC system, for example, it, it was designed by a specialist. Uh, information specialist and scientific specialist in teams. And uh, classical databases and society, they were also uh, made this way. But uh, social tagging is uh, a user based technology. It's the users that that, that Databases is the midline database, the psychic database, and uh, not so typical, the, the science and safety database. And these classic databases are close to search engines by Google and Google Scholar, for example. Classical databases typically develop natural language fields to control the vocabulary. All of the with the exception of the science and safety database, which has no system or no control. In classical databases with the system increasingly today challenged by search engines. However, general search engines like Google are optimized for common needs and are not optimal, for example, for information about rare diseases. There have been made a special search engine for rare diseases, for rare diseases called Find C1. Uh, and that has been shown by experiments to output from the So I think this is an important principle that if you have special needs, you need special uh, tools. So a general, a general specification system, a general search engine is not as good as one that is tailored to the specific needs. Uh, uh, challenges from search engines and statistical approaches exist for, high, for all kinds of large organization systems and control vocabularies. Every time you see a reference here, uh, it is in the literature list and you have access to, to the whole presentation. And if some of you would like to, to have a copy of some of my papers, you can just send me an email and I'll send you a PDF file with the text. So, uh, 
I think it's important if, if we still work with knowledge organizing systems like Tessauri and uh, ontologies and control for parallelism. It is uh, important that we uh, do that on the background of research and practice uh, uh, where uh, uh, we consider the challenges from search engines and statistical approaches. And in the uh, last article from, from last year, I put forward the argument that serious information seekers, uh, such as uh, people writing medical uh, systematic reviews, they need to be in control of the search process. And it might indicate that exact match system should be preferred for this match system for some systems. Also, when you use a search engine like Google, you, you have not a specific, well-defined uh, set of, of, of records, but you have a ranking of records, and, and uh, I argue that for such serious purposes, it's important to have, uh, to have uh, exact match systems. My argumentation for classical databases and uh, exact match system is partly uh, based on a distinction made by an uh, information researcher, Julian Warner, uh, between, first, a computer science and information science tradition with a basic assumption, uh, in which the basic assumption broadly can be termed uh, query transformation, which implies that a user's verbal query formulated before the start of search is transferred by an information system into a set of documents or And contrary to this dominant paradigm of the computer information oriented tradition, Warner presents a tradition that is based more on library science and on the practice of indexing. This tradition is far older but less influential today. In this opinion, there are two especially valuable elements in this tradition. The first is the explicit priority of the selection power, that the user's uh, ability to make relevant distinctions during a search. But the second is the recognition of the need for human labor to create this selection power. So these are two very different kinds of paradigms in information science today. And uh, I think this, this is uh, important to understand. Uh, Warner does not, however, say much about how to optimize bibliographical records and knowledge organization. If we reject the idea that it is possible in theory and practice to make a document representation that satisfies all hypothetical priorities, then it becomes important investigate a criteria for optimal representations. So I have for, for a long, long time been convinced that there is no such thing as a perfect system. So no system can, can uh, answer more questions equally good. So that means that when you design a question, you have to uh, consider what, what kind of queries you have to see what, what, what is this system designed for. Present day systems and possibility are already very advanced. If we need to go further, we need criteria on what is important and relevant and what should be found during searches. One traditional way of addressing this problem is by taking user surveys, that is, by asking the users about their priorities. I have for a long time felt that the user oriented approach confuses two different kinds of subjectivity. First, uh, psychology, what can be learned by studying people, and second, epistemology, what can be learned from philosophy of science and science. So what I'm saying is that if we should make an, an optimal system for medical use, it should not be made by studying uh, 
human psychology, but it should be made by uh, philosophical and other kinds of studies of this. And optimization of, for example, medical databases should primarily be based on medical epistemology, for example, on the debates on evidence based medicine. So my conclusion, my first conclusion about classical databases is this that traditional, traditionally the cells have been the dominant uh, kind of multi organization system in classical databases. But in a recent paper, I argue that the traditional cells is too restricted in the semantic relations it provides, and therefore uh, we need more open or controlled like uh, large organizing systems. The second conclusion from about classical databases is that uh, a knowledge organizing system cannot be understood as a neutral tool, but must be understood as a tool that supports some interest at the cost of other interests. The study and uh, uh, explication of those interests is an important task for knowledge organizing This is uh, in medicine very much connected to issues such as evidence-based medicine and uh, uh, the second uh, section of my presentation about knowledge organization processes. Why knowledge organizing system is now an established concept in knowledge organization. Knowledge organizing process is a new generic term that I have suggested. The idea is that knowledge organization at the general level is about both knowledge organizing systems and knowledge organizing processes. Knowledge organizing processes are processes such as constructing the knowledge organizing system, but also the process classifying single documents or items to already established knowledge organization systems. Knowledge organizing processes are also describing, indexing, and metadata assignment. Knowledge organizing processes are done by humans or by computers. They may be done by information specialists, by the subject specialists, by the people, for example, the social tech, and by algorithms. A little information about social tagging. Uh, we have here the, the figure of the insurance shirt, and uh, it indicates that if you have quality, then you reach more people. And if you reach more people, more people will participate in, uh, for example, uh, writing in the data or in. Uh, in, uh, uh, social uh, and if more people, uh, if more people participate in social tagging or in the opinion, then uh, the quality will be increased. So what it says here is that quality in social tagging and social media is very dependent on, uh, on uh, the large uh, participation. I come from Denmark, and in Denmark we have a an indicator. And uh, in general, I consider it is a very pure quality because Denmark is, is too small a country uh, to, have, uh, to have many volunteers that participate in it. German and the English and the other, uh, other uh, indicator versions are much more special. The same here for children. Knowledge organizing processes are always influenced by human subjectivity. It's a common mistake to consider, for example, algorithms as providing objective knowledge organizing systems. Um, I have, I, 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 I write a lot of papers, and uh, sometimes they turn out, sometimes they're not turned out. And uh, in one of the papers, it was accepted uh, finally, but the first there was that of course algorithms are objective. 
of researchers interested in the bias, ideology, politics, etc. of church entities, exactly because no system can be neutral and always has to consider some goals more and more. <coughs> I know that you people here in Brazil uh, are more skeptical to American dominance and uh, that you want to to develop uh, your own uh, your own system. And, uh, if you consider a system like Google, uh, Google is a, a system that makes some priority, uh, and uh, we cannot also uh, decide what this index on Google and how much it is. So this is, there has been a suggestion that. Uh, Government and all over the world should cooperate to make a basic indexing of the internet, and then we should have multiple, uh, multiple um, search engines for it. So uh, it, it is important. It is an important way that uh, uh, different search engines they have uh, different biases, uh, uh, politics, and so on, and that uh, we need a certain system. They have no real alternatives to Google and Bing. They are the only large search engines. And any large organizing system or any actual assignment of elementary classes will be influenced by human subjectivity. I, I have uh, formulated uh, it this way show me your, your classification. Tell you what kind of system you are in those parts. So, so there is no such thing as a neutral classification. A classification system will always uh, repeat whether it's done by uh, one kind of uh, from one shot people or uh, by the female or uh, it will always show uh, uh, the subjectivity of the Knowledge organizing processes is in knowledge organization and computer science a narrow conception. It has also a wider meaning, the way knowledge and meaning is produced in society. Knowledge organizing processes in the narrow sense depends on narrow organization in the wider sense. As uh, women wrote, the real classifier of literature is like the show power to classify this merely in the So, uh, my first conclusion is that uh, knowledge organizing processes is a generic term for all processes in knowledge organization. All uh, knowledge organizing processes are interested in subjectivities and reflect this in different ways. So, I think this is my most important message that if we choose to study knowledge organization, uh, we, we have to study it. How they are influenced by the human Then, uh, a few words about scientific consensus. Scientific consensus is uh, more rare than most people see. A philosophy uh, of field growth. Consensus is most likely to appear along the parking line of whom it is characteristic to be unemotious uh, on the truth of what is emotion. In intellectual matters, agreement is rare, especially in life issues. So, how can scientific consensus? I 
and made an agreement where I integrated the formal uh, information from all the issues. A Danish speaking page, a Danish speaking page, a Danish language page, a Swedish language, and then a Swedish page. By comparing the information about one more. What was your knowledge of one more? Should, should all women be recommended for a webinar for one more? Do you know what else are for to say the same on this? They, they, they used to say that uh, women uh, at 50 years or older should uh, be recommended to, to, to have a, a regular But uh, there has been studies showing that in, in some countries, including Denmark, the women that were, that, that were offered by market in, in some parts of the country they had the same uh, survival uh, statistics. <coughs> so one study, one one study, uh, said that one of the same And uh, this case uh, study has been repeated on the And today there is a uh, there's no concept about whether my market is safe to survive or what the women is or not. It is simply the two hundred. And when I looked at these uh, information sources, there was only one source, and that was the NDB case, which says that there is a conflict between the health of the skin disease. There is no concern. And the industry data had uh, bibliographical references to both sides of the So I, I consider this a, a, better, uh, a better information source than the others who just say that, for example, the UK that just said, uh, the UK just said that most health authorities uh, recommend women older than 50 to have a regular uh, So I think also that, that this, that uh, when scientific consensus is there, it's a criteria of a good information source that it, uh, that it says so, that uh, the best argument for the science. There's not just disagreement about the effect of homography. There's also disagreement about the methodology of evidence-based medicine. Can I have a reference to the trial of my group then? He write about this. This conflict in homography is not just a conflict. It's not just an Disagreement about whether or not to be swing. It's also a disagreement about how should a good study be done so that we know for sure whether it is because. And here again, our subjectivity involved because different uh, systematic reviews they tend to consider uh, some study as valid and other studies as not, and there's not no. There's no objective uh, ground uh, to say which study should be and which should not be. So, my fifth conclusion is that a large organizing system should either be constructed from the case to sit the regular one of the group. Or, as 
alternative view to different views and make conversion visible to users. And the sixth conclusion is that the public have issues I want to consider in indexing and translation. What kind of evidence is this study based on that should be indexed? If there are disagreements, disagreements, this should be image searchable. Now to uh, the fourth part of my presentation, approaches to the construction of knowledge organizing systems. Knowledge organizing systems may be constructed from different principles and related to different underlying epistemologies. One uh, well-known tradition in environmental uh, information science is the principal tradition. You can say it's all based on logical principles of organizing. Then there are user-oriented and cognitive traditions. They are based on uh, user surveys and uh, experiments with users. Then we have hypervisical uh, approaches. Hypervisical approaches, uh, Google is, is probably based on hypervisical approaches. Hypervisical uh, approaches say who is linking to whom, who is sizing. Uh, if you build your uh, large organizing system based on such patterns of uh, uh, inter-sidedness or interlinkedness, you can use internal information. Statistical approaches, uh, they are uh, dominant today in uh, science. The domain analytic approach, I will speak more about that. Then there are other approaches, for example, standardization and based practices. So, in, in my research, what, what I focus most on, and have done so for some years, is to say that when you build large organizations in a system, uh, you have, you're using some or other approach, and that it's uh, important to consider the strengths and weaknesses of each kind of most, uh, the largest chance is to, uh, uh, to, to challenge uh, the statistical uh, I think that all approaches have strengths and weaknesses, and uh, the things that, that I am trying to do, uh, I am going to do in There's no doubt that statistical approaches have been extremely effective. Uh, Robinson wrote, the statistical approaches were simply. They were overwhelmingly more successful compared to other approaches such as this one. However, Robinson also said that there's a need for statistical approaches to cooperate with other approaches. So he made a good thing for us. He said that there's a need for other approaches. So far, classical databases with controlled uh, vocabularies and thesauri still represent the dominant search aid uh, in making systematic reviews for evidence-based medicine. According to the analysis of the available research made in Antigua Road last year, full research in classical databases seem to be superior to best match techniques that is true. If you speak to computer scientists, they would be skeptical. Computer scientists are always there to be But I think it's, it's important to keep to the most, uh, the, the best technology until other lines improve. Uh, and uh, as I said before, I think it's important that uh, for serious purposes, such as the research, uh, humans should be in control of the uh, search process. We should know exactly what is found and what is not found. And therefore, I think that uh, uh, this is uh, one reason uh, that classical databases are still superior. 
that is set these kinds of systems, for example, metal, into better cooperation with full text techniques and also a better comparison in the philosophy of science. For many years, I have been a spokesperson for the domain and music view. The domain and music view means that in order to build an, an information system, a, a domain for some medicine, you should uh, study the, uh, the theories and uh, uh, concepts in that specific In the beginning, it was developed as an alternative to a cognitive group dominating in information science and online science. Later, the domain of music view developed in relation to the other views presented in the group. It has been more and more clear that the specific focus of the main analysis is how different meta theories in a domain implies different classifications of that domain. For example, that a classification cannot be neutral or a theoretical in relation to different ways of framing that. <coughs> My view is based on pragmatic philosophy. And pragmatic philosophy is something different from what we say when we use the word classic in the context. So, classic philosophy is a more serious uh, philosophy. And, uh, pragmatic, uh, and uh, there's a term called pragmatic realism. And it's uh, distinct from it's a physical realism. I guess that most of you would consider it very strange to claim that classification and ontology in the, in the end the space of physics, but uh, this it, this argument is uh, is not spoken on the very convention. And it's it's my view that when you classify something uh, in the end, it has political and ethical consequences the way you have it. Therefore in the end uh, uh, how the world is classified. So it's a physical realism that is related to inferences, process, and process, whereas pragmatic realism is related to practices, hermeneutics, critical theory, and so on. And an example. If you classify in a field like, for example, uh, information science itself, you do so by considering concepts uh, from the literature and uh, also the logic and other principles. But I think that when you do that, you have uh, what's called a hermeneutic concern. That is, you cannot select the concept before you know the field, and you cannot know the field before you know the concept. So therefore, uh, if you're not explicit uh, about uh, your, your view of the field, you cannot make uh, 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 a real uh, Many, many physical studies and many fields uh, in, in, uh, in underlying systems claim that they make objective uh, systems. But, uh, the way they collect the data uh, influence uh, the kind of system they build. So then their implicit subjectivism is reflected in the system. And the only way to avoid this is to, uh, to work and, and, and be yet more clear about your, your own view. The selection of terms for classification of, uh, yeah, I just said that, uh, of the field reflect and hermeneutics. So I think the, the hermeneutics is important. The two concepts in, in hermeneutics is the most important. The one is the hermeneutics of uh, and the other uh, is the, uh, the concept of pre-knowledge. That when you study something, you, do, you, you, you do, don't have um, um, I'll give you a few of things, but a few of things is uh, the 
So my seventh conclusion is that the different approaches are to a certain degree competing and uh, to a certain degree uh, and supplementary. The domain of this view is not just an alternative, but it's also a question of uh, considering these approaches as different tools. So that one tool is not the best for all purposes, and applying them in a more evolutionary way as opposed to a more mechanical way. And uh, the eighth conclusion there are two fundamental different ways of understanding ontology, investigation, and domain analysis. One has the term distributional realism, and the other, pragmatic realism. Classical realism is, on the one hand, not a purely relativist philosophy, but recognizes, on the other hand, the influence of human goals and activities. And I have a note about uh, project searching that many existing knowledge organizations exist in the they, they uh, uh, perform poorly on the internet. For example, the uh, of conference on mechanics have been studied for uh, recommended systems and the rest study found that that number of subject, the uh, number of conference on mechanics, they contributed zero to the recommended systems. So that's a uh, very important uh, Most knowledge organizations uh, will continue to play important roles in the cases where no data or non full text or two small data pieces are available, as uh, suggested by the uh, And I recommend that if full text searching and algorithms can take over, there will be small fields uh, where, where uh, they may not take over, for example, in the future. But to, uh, but to say that knowledge uh, organizing system is only about those uh, small fields is, in my uh, opinion, a limited purpose and a defensive strategy. With ambitious and offensive strategy is to uncover the limitations of the statistical approaches, such as uh, the assumption that document similarity can be measured objectively by considered the uh, basis of words, and that the goal of researchers is to retrieve similar patterns. Uh, it also warns criticism of word information and the like. So, from the uh, perspective of domain analysis, qualified people's conceptions of documents are extremely important for documents. This is obvious if we think about picture, uh, if we think about pictures of art, why text seems to be different because we use language, language for both writing text and providing these data text. However, just as a picture does not say I'm a romantic picture, a program does not either classify itself according to liberation or when scholars use scientific literature, they too have their norms and criteria for quality and relevance. For example, the norms associated with the field experience. Information specialists should study these norms and make it possible for users to identify what we should call the best sexual needs to make. This, I believe, first and foremost calls for a technological analysis of the documents. The main studies of technology. Special languages, concept series, and the like. 